Shalom. First and foremost, as always, I want to give our praise, our honor, and our glory unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakhakwadash. And next, double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of the great millstone, who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people are here or whether they forbear. All right, and this uh, lesson is going to be entitled The Mind State of Nat Turner. Okay. And we're going to, uh, if you don't know who that is, we're going to read about him all right, from an article that I have uh, prepared. And then, of course, as always, we're going to go into the scriptures. And Lord's will is edifying to the elect. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right. Here we are. This is an article from history.com on Nat Turner. Okay. And um, I'm going to start right here from the top. Okay, it says Nathaniel, uh, quote unquote, Nat Turner, born 1800 and died 1831, was an enslaved man who led a rebellion of enslaved people on August 21st, 1831. His actions set off a massacre of up to 200, quote unquote, black people and a new wave of oppressive legislation prohibiting the education, movement and assembly of enslaved people. The rebellion also stiffened pro-slavery anti-abolitionist convictions that persisted in that region until the American Civil War, 1861-65. Okay, his early life, Turner was born on the Virginia plantation of Benjamin Turner, who allowed him to be instructed in reading, writing, and religion. Sold three times in his childhood and hired out to John Travis, he became a fiery preacher and a leader of enslaved African Americans on Benjamin Turner's plantation in his San Southampton County neighborhood, claiming that he was chosen by God to lead them from bondage. Okay, and then it says uh, his insurrection. So this is when he rose up. Okay, it says, believing in signs and hearing divine voices, Turner was convinced by an eclipse of the sun in 1831 that the time to rise up had come, and he had enlisted the help of four other enslaved men in that area. An insurrection was planned and aborted, and rescheduled for August 21st, 1831, when he and six others killed the Travis family and managed to secure arms and horses and enlisted about 75 other enslaved people in a large but disorganized insurrection that resulted in the murder of an estimated 55 quote unquote white people. All right, it wasn't murder, it was an act of war. Afterwards, Turner hid nearby successfully for six weeks until his discovery, conviction, and hanging at Jerusalem, Virginia, all right, which is very spiritual, along with 16 of his followers. The incident put fear in the heart of Southerners, ended the organized emancipation movement in that region, resulted in even harsher laws against enslaved people, and deepened the schism between slaveholders and free soilers, an anti-slave political party whose slogan was free soil, free speech, free labor, and free men that would culminate in the Civil War. Because right, that's what the Civil War was fought over, was for the pretty much uh, the right for Esau to continue to have us in slavery. Okay, now the title of this lesson, okay, is the mind state of Nat Turner. Uh, let's start with this, the Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter seven and verse seven. It says, "I'm gonna get the first half." It says, "Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad." Okay, so. Uh, Nat Turner, he was raised up to be a preacher, all right, and we know that plantation Christianity was designed to keep our people docile, okay, but him being a preacher, being taught to read, most likely what happened is that he learned and understood the prophecies, and he understood that we were the Israelites, okay, he was an Israelite, all right, and that's what caused him to rebel, okay, and he was in the right spirit, okay, because that's the patience and the faith of the saints, okay, let's go ahead and get that right quick. The patience and the faith of the saints is for justice to be delivered. All right, the only place that that he failed in was that it was not the right time. All right, but he was in the right mindset. Okay, this is Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10. It says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Okay, so he was in a righteous mindset. All right, to be thinking that way, okay, to, to be uh, desiring, you know, for, for judgment and justice to be executed upon his enemies, all right? He was in the right mindset, okay? This is the book of Sirach, chapter 35, in the Good News Translation. All right, I'm going to start at 
verse uh, 12, okay, the second half, it says, it's entitled God's justice, okay, the Most High, His name is Yahweh. So Yahweh's justice. The Lord is fair and does not show partiality. Okay, so He doesn't, He's fair, all right? We, we were in slavery, so what's gonna happen to Esau on the other side, all right? They're gonna be in slavery. And that's gonna, that's gonna happen very, very soon, okay? Once Jacob's trouble, uh, Jacob's trouble pretty much kicks off, that's gonna be the end result of Jacob's trouble. And that is the, effectively the tabernacle of David being raised up on the earth. Uh, Edom shall be a possession, etc., etc. Okay, it says the Lord is fair and does not show partiality. He is not prejudiced against the poor. When someone prays who has been wronged, the Lord listens. When orphans and widows pour out their prayers, he does not ignore them. The tears running down a widow's cheek cry out an accusation against the one who has caused her distress. Okay, and that's the daughter of Zion, is that widow that's being spoken of. It says, serve the Lord willingly and the Lord will accept you. Your prayers will reach the skies. The prayer of a humble person goes past the clouds and keeps on going until it reaches the Most High, where it stays until he answers by seeing that justice is done and that the guilty are punished. And the Lord will act quickly. He will show no patience with wicked people. He will take vengeance by crushing the heathen. He will completely wipe out the merciless and the arrogant and will destroy the authority of the wicked. He will give each of us what our thoughts and actions deserve. Because of the Lord's mercy, his people will be happy when he has judged their case. Okay? And that's what's getting ready to happen. Ultimately, once again, he was in the right state of mind. Okay? The only, the only problem was that the Lord said, wait until the day that I rise up to the prey. All right? He, you know, he wanted to do it right then and there at that time. All right? Which I, I you know... Being in that position, all right, we can only imagine, all right, and we were back then, you know, through the reincarnation, and Nat Turner is back today, and he's going to be able to finish that rebellion, okay, by way of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, okay, if he's of the elect, we don't know, but either way, the, the, the purpose that he was trying to accomplish is going to happen, and it's going to be uh, uh, completed by Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, we just have to be patient, okay, Zephaniah 3 and 8, therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Okay, so we just gotta wait until the day that Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai rise up to the prey. Uh, he was in the mindset, he wanted it there and then, and I, I can't blame him for that, you know? I can't blame him for that. Okay, we're still here this day in our captivity, just waiting, preparing for the Lord to plead our cause. This is Micah 7 and 9. I will bear the indignation of Yahweh because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Okay, and what, what cause is that that he's going to plead? Proverbs 22 and 23. Okay, it's like you. Proverbs 22 and 23. This is what we're waiting for the Lord to do. All right, this is the gospel. Proverbs 22 and 23, it says, For the Lord will plead their cause and spoil the soul of those that spoiled them. Okay, Esau, Edom, who is the self-proclaimed so-called white man. All right. So that's 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 what Nat Turner, that's the mindset that he was in. He said he wanted to take matters into his own hands. Okay, but we have a savior. All right, Yahweh Shai, and the Lord is going to use him to deliver the elect. All right, the children of Israel. Okay, this is Isaiah 19 and 20. And it should be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Most High Yahweh because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a Savior and a Great One, and he shall deliver them. Okay, so that's the time that we're getting ready to come into. All right, when Yahweh Shai appears, he said, I'm going to smash Edom like grapes. Let's go ahead and let's get that right quick. Isaiah 63 and verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom? with dyed garments from Basra. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? Why, why, is your, why is your clothing red? And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. He says, I have trod in the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And finally, Yahweh Rachazah 2024 is that year. We will get to see 
vengeance upon our enemies, okay? It's just, there's nothing sweeter than that according to Sirach 25 and 9 on down. Okay, verse 5, it says, And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered, and there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. Okay, and this is speaking of none other than Esau Edom. He says, I will mention, and let's get the next verse, verse 7, I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and all the praises of the Lord according to all that Yahweh had bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel. So he, this slaughter is going to be against Edom, against Basra. Okay, once again, the so-called white man, which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and loving kindness, according to the multitude of his loving kindness, Salakia. Okay, verse 8. For he said, Surely they are my people, children that will not lie, so he was their savior. Alright. And that's talking about the elect. Okay. If you really read down, it's talking about back then at that time when we were in our first, you know, we were uh, in, in, in good standing with our power. Okay. And it goes to how we turned away. But in this time, okay, this is Isaiah 63rd chapter. You know, he's coming to smash Edom. Okay. And he's going to deliver his elect. Okay. In the time that we're coming into. Okay, let's get uh, Psalms 72 and 4. All right, so Yahweh Shai is going to come and he's going to be the completion. All right, Psalm 72 and 4. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. And that's, that is ultimately, you know, what he was uh, purposed to do and what we are hoping and praying that comes quickly. Okay, Luke chapter 1, verse um, 67. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, power of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, okay, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that we that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life all right and that's that's what we're praying for okay we're praying to be delivered from the hands of our enemies all right and that's what yahweh shai is coming to do he's going to finish what nat turner attempted to do okay which he was not able to because of the curses deuteronomy 28th chapter it says thou shalt be spoiled and oppressed forevermore and no man shall save thee, okay? No man is able to redeem us, deliver us, but Yahweh Shai. Okay, this is uh, Psalms, the 10th chapter, verse 12. It says, Arise, O Yahweh, O power, lift up thine hand and forget not the humble. Wherefore does the wicked contemn the Most High? He has said in his heart, Thou wilt not require it. So they don't think that they're going to ever receive recompense for this. Thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest mischief and spite to requite it, to requite it with thy hand. The poor committed themselves unto thee, thou art the helper of the fatherless. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man, okay, Esau Eden, so called white man, seek out his wickedness till thou find none. The Most High, Yahweh, is king forever and ever, the heathen are perished out of his land. Yahweh, thou hast heard the desire of the humble, thou wilt prepare their heart, thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. He's preparing us for deliverance. To judge the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth, once again, Esau Eden, the so-called white man, may no more oppress. Okay? That's the prayer of the saints, the patience and the faith of the saints. Okay? That he that lead into captivity shall go into captivity. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Okay? That's, that's justice. That's judgment. This is Ezekiel. It's like Isaiah 35. Okay? In verse uh, 3, it says, Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong and fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even the Most High with a recompense. He will come and save you. Okay? And that's the time we're getting ready to come into, and that's a beautiful thing. And I'm going to close out with this. I want to make it something quick. Isaiah, the 10th chapter. Okay, Isaiah chapter 10. And let's see. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse, um, verse 20. Okay, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, that the remnant of Israel, and such as are escaped to the house of Jacob, shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. All right, we're not going to worry about Esau Edom anymore. All right, Esau's going to be taken out of power. We're never going to go back into slavery again. 
all right, but shall stay upon the Most High Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. All right, so we're, you know, we're getting ready to be uh, joined back unto the Lord, and we're never going to be back in captivity again up under Esau, Edom, this devil. All right, we're getting ready to be free, and that's why we are excited. We're hasting this time to come. Get the time of Jacob's trouble, because once this pops off, this is it for us. All right, and that that uh, mission that that Nat Turner had to free his people, the children of Israel. Okay, at that time, or, the, or specifically the tribe of Judah, you know, that got sent over here uh, to America, Babylon the Great, to serve out captivity and servitude, right alongside with the other eleven tribes. All right, but Nat Turner, you know, he was most likely from the tribe of Judah, and his mission was to set free his people, the so-called Negroes. All right, that, that mission is, is finally uh, getting ready to be completed by our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. So the Wadi Yahweh Shemi Shai for that. And the uh, Lord's will, this is edifying to the elect. As always, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Until next time, Shalom and the Bible Ball.